Hi, I'm Ralph, and in this show, we're going to take a look at five new, risky, dangerous innovations that SpaceX are going to be trying out this year in order to get their new mega rocket working. If any of these don't work, there's a good chance the Starship rocket ends in failure. So there's a lot of people out there with their fingers crossed, and for everyone else, well, it's going to be really exciting seeing a test flight every few weeks, whatever happens. So with Elon Musk stating that he's got to make a flight every couple of weeks throughout 2022 to iterate a working Starship rocket, I've picked out five technologies that Musk's trying out in his dash for orbital spaceflight this year, each of which has every chance of not working and each sounded insane when Musk first proposed it. But before we get into the first one, let us know in the comments below if you think Starship is going to succeed at all. And if you like what we're doing in these videos, please do give us a like and subscribe to the show for more space-themed videos every week. So first up in my list is the orbital launch mount. The least sexy sounding of my five, but hopefully I can convince you that it's cooler and harder than it sounds, because unlike the rockets we saw launching and landing at Boca Chica last year, the rockets launching this year are intended to go into Earth orbit, with a booster stage that I'll come onto in a minute, and the spacecraft section that we saw being launched blown up, launched, blown up, launched and finally landed in 2021. The booster section that will do all the heavy lift will be filled with fuel and have 33 rocket engines firing on launch. That needs a giant sturdy platform to launch from and all the ground systems to allow it. Quick release heavy duty clamps that secure the rocket to the pad. Quick disconnect arms that feed the rocket with propellant and pull away at the point of launch a water deluge system to mitigate heat and sound damage, and all the methane, nitrogen, oxygen and water tanks to feed the rockets with thousands of tonnes of propellant. We've already seen work on most of these systems, but something on this scale has never been done before, and Musk has said the ground systems are actually harder and more time consuming than designing and building the rockets themselves, so the last thing he wants is them getting damaged on launch. Starship will have significantly more thrust on launch than the mighty Saturn V moon rocket, so the launch system, which is still being built and has therefore never been used, has to work despite its complexity. No functioning launch system, no launch. Next up in my list is the booster rocket. We've talked about it already in this episode, and unlike the shuttle or most large rockets in use today to lift heavy payloads into space, the Starship will be a single column with the spaceship section stacked on top of the booster, whose only purpose is to expend fuel getting the spaceship section to a high altitude before it needs to detach and light its own engines to get into space. That way, the spaceship section hasn't expended any fuel getting miles above the Earth. And we've seen booster prototypes being moved around the test facilities at Boca Chica and being test fired in the last few months, but not a single booster has been flown or proven out yet. And some of the 20 or so launches we can expect this year won't even involve the spaceship section that we saw being tested last year. While many of the launches will be a full stack flight of the spaceship on top of the booster section, Musk has already said lots of the tests will be test flights of just the booster section. And that's just as well because, as I mentioned, the finished version will have 33 Raptor engines which are very heavy, very powerful and timely and costly to make. So while Musk expects to drop a few boosters in the ocean initially, SpaceX want to begin recovering them as soon as possible to allow them to start taking advantage of Starship's unique selling point, full reusability. The cost of losing 33 reusable Raptor engines to the sea each flight just isn't sustainable in the long term. And to achieve this, the booster and the spaceship section both have a fuel reservoir to return to the launch pad autonomously, ready to be checked out, refueled, 
and launched again. It's cracking this reusability and a fast turnaround to relaunch that will determine whether the Starship is viable as a low-cost launcher for heavy payloads and whether it can be used as a rocket-powered airliner to fly people to anywhere on the globe in under 30 minutes. And that brings us nicely on to innovation number three, the rocket engines themselves. SpaceX's workhorse rocket, the Falcon 9, uses SpaceX's own Merlin engines, as does the heavy lift version, the Falcon Heavy, but the Starship will be much bigger and heavier, so will need a lot more thrust. So SpaceX have developed a new rocket engine called Raptor. These Raptor engines have more than twice the thrust of the Merlin engines and were only used for last year's Boca Chica flight tests. SpaceX are already about to ditch them in favour of their new, untested version 2 Raptors. On top of that, the spaceship section also needs three of these version 2 Raptor engines and three Raptor variants that are optimised for the vacuum of space, colloquially named RVACs. Now, no RVACs have been flight tested either, that means two new types of rocket engines are going to be tested on an experimental flight of the largest rocket configuration ever flown. Oh, and as I mentioned earlier, the booster will need to use 33 of them together. But the Falcon Heavy already uses 27 rocket engines on launch, so 33, while as yet untested, maybe doesn't seem like that much of a stretch. Does it? Rather your money than mine, Elon. And to add more complexity, the centre engines on both the booster and the spaceship will need to gimbal so they can steer the thrust for landing. But as you can see here, from an Elon Musk tweet, that part's already well in hand. So on to innovation number two, and we're going back to the future with this one, thermal protection tiles. Now you can probably remember the tiles that protected the space shuttle from the searing heat of re-entry, or you've heard how fragile they turned out to be when insulation foam came off a shuttle booster and damaged tiles on the wing of Space Shuttle Columbia, killing seven astronauts when heat seeped in during re-entry. Well, if you want to bring a large object that's not just a capsule back to Earth, you need heat tiles to absorb or bleed heat away as you tear back through the atmosphere at hypersonic speeds. And in the case of the Starship, that's 25,000 tiles per vehicle. 25,000 tiles that have a really bad reputation because of all the problems NASA had with them on space shuttles. Now, actually, Starship has one big advantage over the shuttle here. Nothing can fall off the booster and damage the tiles on the spaceship section because the spaceship is on top of the booster. But SpaceX have also developed a novel ceramic wool insulation to go underneath the tiles for extra protection if heat does seep in. And you can see the tiles being heat tested here. Also, starships are made of stainless steel, which can withstand twice the heat of the aluminium that the space shuttle was made of. So there's some extra cause for optimism here. If any of the tiles do crack before re-entry, the Starship may actually survive it. But you still can't get past the fact that tiles need to be made of ceramic or other heat insulating materials that are all incredibly rigid and fragile. And spaceflight is, well, it's rather violent with vibrations on launch and re-entry and micrometeorite impacts while in space. So SpaceX have already built a factory in Florida to make, or actually bake, these tiles in their thousands, and we're now seeing Starship sections arriving at Boca Chica ready to be assembled, with the tiles already on them. So SpaceX are making significant advancements from their first designs and new ways to attach these tiles. And if returning to thermal protection systems that were shown to be so disastrous 30 years ago wasn't insane enough for you, we have our number one innovation that Musk is going to try this year. Remember, all of these have to work if SpaceX are going to realise their dream of launching, returning and quickly relaunching them in the numbers that they need in order to make Starship profitable. So here's number one. Catching rockets in mid-air, anyone? It seems the weight of landing legs require too much fuel, and as the Starship launch pad needs to stack spaceship sections on top of the booster sections anyway, why not cut out the middleman and catch the returning rocket sections as they return to the base and stack them there and then, ready to be refuelled and fly again. 
Well, because it's hard. So to that end, SpaceX have installed two giant metal arms on their launch tower called Chopsticks by Musk in a nod to the movie Karate Kid, likening this to the difficulty catching flies with chopsticks. In this tweet, Musk stated that SpaceX will try to catch the largest ever flying object with robot chopsticks, and concedes that success is not guaranteed, but excitement is. Those gigantic robotic arms are already installed on the launch tower at Boca Chica, and they're going through movement and weight testing as we speak. They won't be used for the first few test flights this year, but by late spring or early summer, we'll see the catching system working. Or a huge fireball, like Musk said. Success is not guaranteed, but excitement is. But are any of these innovations a step too far? Which, if any, do you think will work? Will we see a successful orbital launch and a return to base for both the booster and the spaceship section in 2022? Let me know what you think in the comments below and take a look at any of these videos to hear more of our thoughts on SpaceX and this new revolution in access to space.